Ah, good morning. I just finished my second year studying computer science. And in this video, I'm going to give an honest course review on every course that I took. And I will also be ranking them in terms of difficulty on this chart. You know what I realized about online school? Zoom University is kind of sketchy. Let's say you go on Udemy.com right now and you purchase a course and suppose that the course has zero reviews, zero ratings, cost $700 and no refunds. Does that sound like a good deal? That's basically Zoom University right now. And all I'm doing is filling that market need by giving a review and a preview on what you can expect to get the most bang out of your buck. So without further ado, Let's get to the course review. So these are the courses that I took in first year when it was in person. And these are the courses that I took in second year when my school transitioned to fully online. Yo, my grades are like the stock market. This was a pre-COVID, post-COVID. Rest in peace, all my tech stocks. First course I took as a pre-CS major is computer science. 110. My absolute favorite course taught by my favorite professor. Before I continue, have you heard of this company called Intentional Software? One founder became a billionaire, the other chose knowledge. Knowledge. And left the company to join UBC to create the CompSci 110 course. So you know you're getting your money's worth. This course is taught using Racket, which is a functional programming language that uh, nobody uses, which is fine because CompSci 110 focuses on the design recipes, the problem solving behind computer science. There have been so many times when I was able to transfer the experiences from 110 to something else. In this course, you'll master the art of recursion and you'll get a proper introduction to trees, graphs, search, abstraction, and many more programming concepts. Overall, I give it a rating of 11 out of 10. Now, in terms of difficulty, it's in between manageable and hard. Now, I think for 110, for someone who has never programmed before, um, I think I'm gonna label it as hard, mainly because there's gonna be a lot of uh, work that you're gonna have to do. You're not really used to solving problems in a functional programming language. So I think for everyone, you know, the first time they're doing it, um, especially with other courses, this belongs in hard. Moving on, the second course I took for CS is Computer Science 121. Woo! This, this is a, this is a thick, thick course. Let me tell you. Okay, so this is your uh, discrete math and hardware course. You'll learn all about logic from the ground up and also proofs as well. And you'll also be working with circuits. These, these things. And also you learn about number representation, propositional statements, predicate logic, sequential circuits, proofs, induction, DFAs, and regular expressions. Now that is a lot of material to cover in one course, but uh, overall, I would give this course an overall rating of nine out of 10. I really enjoy taking it. It's definitely harder than 110, uh, but I wouldn't put it in no sleep though. No, 121 you can de definitely get like 90%. Um, so how about this? I'm gonna order this in front of 110. So uh, whatever is in front is the hardest. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think that that works. All right, so ComSci 210, and I took this first year. Why did I take it first year? Because why not? Um, so ComSci 210, one of the funnest courses that I've ever taken at UBC, right? Super, super useful. It's about object-oriented design. Now, you know, object-oriented design, you're gonna be drawing a lot of circles with arrows pointing to them, but you know what? It's all about understanding how classes interact with each other. You'll learn about inheritance. You'll learn about polymorphism, you know? Pretty useful stuff, and Java, you know, it's a solid language. Not as cool as JavaScript, but three billion devices use Java, so that's pretty cool. And uh, Compton 210, yeah. Um, overall, I'd say it's pretty easy. I don't think there's anything particular about 210 that would give too much trouble. Although I would say, for uh, 210, you do need to make sure that you're on top of the work because if you fall behind, then a lot of that work will pile up. And I think the same, it's the same with every other CS class. Oh yeah, and for CompSci 210, you will also do a term course project. Uh, that's really cool. You get to build a CRUD application. If you don't know what CRUD is, it's uh, create, update, uh, delete, except that you won't be saving anything to a database. You'll be saving it to a local file, but nevertheless, it's a great project uh, for Java. 
overall, I would give CompSide 210 a rating of 9.1 out of 10. CompSide 210 goes in the easy bucket. Okay. All right, let's move on. So next second year CompSci course that I took, we have CompSci 221. Let's go. This is the lead code course. Algorithms, data structures. Now we move on from Racket to C++. So you'll get to work with pointers. It's, it's important to point out that pointers are important. In CompSci 221, there will be three challenging programming assignments that you have to do. Um, be sure to find a good partner. For 221, I give it an overall rating of nine and a half out of 10. So for 221, honestly, I'd say it's pretty manageable. Um, so I'm gonna put it here. The only thing that I think would give you a lot of trouble is the actual programming assignments. But other than that, I mean, if you think about it, the programming assignments, when you boil it down, is just a combination of lead code questions slapped into one ginormous problem. But if you use your 110 design recipes and trust the natural recursion, you should be good. Now moving on to probably the most challenging computer science class I've ever taken so far in my university career. What I'm talking about, of course, is CompSci 213. Oh boy. All right, so first things first. In this course, you'll work with three programming languages, uh, C, Java, and Assembly. So you're, you are already expected to know uh, Java, so they won't ever, you know, they won't do a, they won't have like a review session, they won't do anything to go over Java, you know, you're expected to know it already. In 2.13, you'll be able to understand your programs and the working computer at a much deeper level. I'm talking about getting out of the friend zone and getting real close to the CPU. Nice and close like, all the way down to the binary level. Some other topics that you'll learn is uh, polymorphism again, but implemented in C. You'll also learn about how data is truly represented in a computer, like how structs, strings, ints are represented, and how compilers actually allocate memory and use offsets to read data. Another challenging topic that you'll get into is reverse engineering. Like given a piece of assembly code, figure out what the original C code was. As if that wasn't hard enough, you'll then get into asynchronous programming and then finally synchronization with multi-core processors and building programs that have multiple threads running at the same time, accessing shared memory. So in total, there are 11 weekly assignments that um, are pretty difficult, but the last two assignments are especially hard. I remember going into the final exam without spending a single hour reviewing the past material because I spent all that time grinding the last two assignments, but I bet I aced that final section on the final exam, which was what I needed to pass the course. Easily deserves a no sleep spot, for sure. And then for our comp side 213, I give it an overall rating of eight and a half out of 10. Now that about does it for the uh, computer science classes that I took. Moving on to the rest of the classes, um, starting with English 111. Uh, so I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't really uh, that high on my priority list because it's, you know, it's just a prereq that the university makes you take. And at the time I was working on a side project uh, that I found to be a bit more important. Um, by the way, it's called CodeBlock. Link is in the description below. Uh, CodeBlock is a extension for Chrome that uh, prompts you to solve a lead code problem every time you visit a distracting site. Um, I'm immensely grateful for all the people that have signed up and paid. Um, but moving on, uh, English 111. I give English 111 a rating of one out of 10. Now, moving on to the second uh, communications requirement, Sci 113. Um, I give it, you know, it's another communications course for science kids, English for science, but you also learn about the scientific process and writing for scientific papers, you know, if you're into research. So I give it a rating of four out of 10, and it's also pretty easy as well. All right, now moving on, let's move on to the econ pairs, 101 and 102. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, um, I took these courses because I read from an article that apparently the most popular major among uh, billionaires were econ. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I wanted to check out what the content was like. And also econ is a prereq to a lot of future 
uh, econ courses. So, you know, might as well see what's up. Uh, but not gonna lie, um, halfway through Econ 102, I kind of just gave up on it and like skipped uh, half the lectures. But I just found um, going to lectures to be uh, a pretty big waste of time. And I think just absorbing the material, you know, it's best to just read the textbook. And again, the reasons, my reasons for, for taking Econ was pretty shallow, not gonna lie. So I wasn't that into it and doing well in it didn't benefit me as much from uh, for example, learning new technologies or working on side projects. Um, but in terms of difficulty, I'm going to be honest, they're pretty easy. Like I spent a day before the midterm to just binge the textbook and three days before the final. And I think I did okay. Um, as for course rating, I give both a uh, five out of 10. And now finally, let's talk about the math courses. Um, now you might have noticed that I don't have math 100 or math 101 here. And that is because I took them in high school. So I had AP credits for, I have AP credits for uh, Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. The way I thought about it was, since I'm not getting any extra credit for taking Calculus again, wanted to have a pretty competitive average in first year. So I decided to not take uh, Math 100 and 101 again. And it just didn't make any sense to me um, if I am paying extra money for material that I have already learned. And if I wanted to review, there was resources like Khan Academy, Coursera, YouTube online that uh, serves as, you know, could serve as an even better source of review for, for calculus. Uh, so that is why I didn't take uh, Math 100 and 101 again, but uh, moving on. So Math 200, um, this is Calculus 3. Uh, I think it speaks for itself where it should go. It's pretty, pretty difficult. Uh, triple integrals gave me a migraine. <laughs> Um, so course rating, I would give math 200, a five out of 10. Now for math 221, um, I actually find, I actually found uh, linear algebra. Uh, that's math 221. I found linear algebra pretty interesting. Uh, in one of the assignments that you do, you learn MATLAB and you learn about how the Google page rank algorithm works in the context of linear algebra. I found that super interesting here, you, you know, in, in one of the MATLAB assignments that you do, you learn about uh, how the Google PageRank algorithm leverages linear algebra to derive popularity. So I found that super interesting. And for that reason, I'm gonna give uh, Math 221 Linear Algebra a an eight out of 10. And it's, uh, it's pretty hard actually as a course. Now let's move on to the statistics courses that I took, STAT 200 and STAT 302. So starting with STAT 200, uh, I didn't find the material super interesting. Essentially, you just learn about um, distributions, normal distributions, elementary statistics, things of that nature. Um, I'd say it's pretty manageable. So um, I'll put it here. As for course rating, I'm gonna give it you know like a seven out of 10. It's good for when you need to make inferences about data. It uh, isn't too complicated. Now, as for stat 302, this one is a different story. This one is actually way harder. <laughs> um, so you start off by learning about just probability in general. Um, and then you move on to discrete random variables and you calculate the expected value of discrete random variables, the PMF. After learning the PMF from discrete random variables, you move on to learning about continuous random variables and introduce the probability density function. Then you get into conditional probability with both discrete and continuous random variables. Anyway, the second half of STAT 302 definitely felt like a different course where the material ramped up big time. I'd say overall though, I would give STAT 302 a rating of seven out of, t out of 10. And so for the rest of the courses here, uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory where these go. Um, definitely GPA booster. And like all these are pretty much just prereqs or uh, some type of requirement. For example, this is like a laboratory science, science breadth, uh, science breadth also. I mean, oh yeah, all these are science breadth except for Data Science 100. So one comment about Data Science 100 is uh, it's a pretty useful course if you have never programmed before. But for me, I have programming experience, so I found the material to be quite uh, quite boring and dry. But thanks for watching. Uh -huh.